Vintage soul once again meets the modern age. Meet the 64. In 1964, Andy Warhol was pushing the conception of visual art, John Coltrane and Eric Dolphy exploring sounds and redefining the genre, while Lou Donaldson and Phil Woods were still deeply rooted in the tradition, but moving bebop and swing to exciting new places. It was an exciting year for art and the inspiration for our new mouthpiece, the 64. I've worked closely with Neil Shree, the VP of Product Development over in Windy City Woodwinds, and over the past year, we've been experimenting and finalizing and refining some really exciting innovations to this mouthpiece. First of all, the chamber. There's a graduated flare to the chamber profile. It's a subtle thing, but has a big impact on sound. It has a very satisfying punch, a lot of projection, but still a very warm, deep core to the sound. It's remarkably easy to play, and while you're improvising, it just kind of encourages you to explore Registers, let loose and kind of let your hair down. But I'm not letting my hair down. Now, secondly, we took a lot of time and care with the baffle design. It's actually a much longer rollover than you'd find in something like a Meyer, and Neil took a great deal of care integrating it into the chamber by modifying the floor. It gives it a brilliance and color, but a consistency of response throughout the entire range. This is really noticeable in the low end, and you'll find a very clear low B flat and a very powerful, beautiful subtone as well. <laughs> We also raised the beak a bit. It's a subtle change, but it changes where your teeth rest on the mouthpiece, encouraging you to open up the oral cavity. That really helps you keep the core sound when you push it. Also makes it much more comfortable to control the sound over long periods of time. I recently played a gig at the Eastern Music Festival, three shows over the course of an entire day. I played it on this mouthpiece, and I was surprised by how comfortable I was at the end of the day, even though I was pushing in large open areas, outdoor stages, really helped me keep my sound and be comfortable and have the stamina to do it. Now, when talking about any alto saxophone mouthpiece, we have to acknowledge the elephant in the room, the Meyer. It's incredibly common, no matter what mouthpiece I'm reviewing or talking about, I always get asked, how does it compare to the Meyer? Well, in speaking with Kevin and the team at Windy City Woodwinds, we really felt there's enough great Meyer clones out there. There's great Meyer homages, Meyer clones of different eras. Uh, my friend Brian at Geta Sax and Theo Wani, they make excellent Meyer homages and clones. We set out to make something different. So we took what the core of the traditional sound was in the mid 1960s, but really changed it to make it something new, something exciting. And I'm really happy with what we've accomplished. And we've got some options for this mouthpiece. First up, premium German bar stock, hard rubber. Milled by Theo Wani in his Willy Wonka-like factory out in the Pacific Northwest, it is beautiful, a rich satin finish with gold inlay. It's minimal, but frankly, it's one of the most beautiful mouthpieces I've held. It's, so it's got all the innovations of this design, but made in a traditional hard rubber. But we're also offering this exact same design in PLA, polylactic acid. Now, Windy City Woodwinds were pioneers of fusion deposition modeling. They weren't the first to do it, but in my opinion, they really took it to the next level, mainly through doing a high resolution print. It takes a lot longer, it's more time consuming, and they do it with 100% infill, which again, takes more time, more materials. 
But the result is a mouthpiece that's remarkably similar in density, weight, and feel of hard rubber, but it also helps us keep down the cost. But most importantly, each of the PLA models are hand finished, which means you're gonna get a smooth glass-like finish on the table and the rails. That makes a big difference in the read friendliness, the response, and frankly, the color, the kind of sparkle to the sound that you want in a really good mouthpiece that makes it incredibly fun to play. So much so that I actually recorded my debut album just a few weeks ago on the PLA. the PLA in both bone white and matte black, hand finished, starting at just $135. And each mouthpiece is tested and measured to 76 thousandths of an inch, which we found to be the perfect tip opening for this mouthpiece. We've taken out the guesswork through a lot of trial and iterations. We found this chamber design, this baffle, this tip opening is just really a winning combination. Now we actually have the PLA in stock ready to ship immediately. Well, limited supply. We are taking pre-orders of the hard rubber milled by Theo Wane. I'll put a link down below. I've been really excited to work on this project and I think we've created something really unique that's gonna make a lot of saxophonists very happy. Now, no mouthpiece matters if most importantly, you don't go practice. I'll be back next week and see you with some educational content again, but go practice. <laughs>